In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Well, good morning and happy All Saints Sunday. This morning, um, we are, as we are celebrating All Saints Day, All Saints Sunday, we might think of the word saint. We might think of uh, a saint as someone who is set apart for special recognition, like the biblical saints, apostles such as Peter and Paul, St. Mary, the mother of God, St. Joseph, her most chaste spouse, St. John, the beloved disciple. Or maybe we think of the saints of the early church, the church fathers, St. Ambrose, St. Augustine, John Chrysostom, Ignatius, Justin Martyr, or St. Cyprian. Those are some of my favorites. Or perhaps our mind goes to more recent figures like Mother Teresa, who worked tirelessly on behalf of the poor, the sick and the dying and the orphaned in Calcutta, India. Perhaps you have a favorite saint that you identify with, someone whose life and witness is an inspiration to you, someone whose faith and perseverance energizes you on your own faith journey. But as diverse and as different as all the saints may be, they all had one thing in common. They were all people who pursued a friendship with God. The saints are people who persevered through the difficulties that life throws each one of us. And in case you think that you could never be like a saint, I encourage you to pick a saint, pick any saint, and read a little bit about their lives. In it you will find struggles, heartache, sadness, temptation to sin, you will find all the things that each one of us face in life. Because the saints are human just like you and me. And just like you and me, they faced all the same hardships that we do. The difference is that the saints persevered to the end. When life knocked them down, they got back up and they kept going. They trusted always that God would give them the strength to continue no matter what. As we observe All Saints Sunday today, I want us all to remember that Christ Jesus wants us to persevere too. And he desires to have a close personal friendship with each one of us. In other words, we're all invited to join the ranks of the great congregation of the saints of God. And we don't have to worry, we don't have to stress out because we don't have to worry that we don't have the strength to do it. Remember, the saints are saints not because they relied on their own strength, but they relied on his strength. Those who have been baptized, those who have continued to live out this faith, live out our baptismal covenant, we can have confidence that God is going to continue to support us. God is going to continue to help you as long as you ask for it, because at our baptism, Christ marked each one of us as his own forever. Whenever we cross ourselves, we remind ourselves of this. And when we cross ourselves with the holy water, we remind ourselves of our, of our baptism. We remind ourselves that we have been marked with the seal of the Holy Spirit. That we have his promise of redemption, and we will inherit a place among the great company of the saints. In fact, in a few moments, we're all about to witness something truly wonderful. The baptism of four young persons who are about to enter the fullness of the life of Christ in his church. In a few moments, Father Chris is going to baptize each one of them with water in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And he's going to anoint their heads with the holy oil of chrism. And he will say, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. This sacrament of baptism, it's an initiation. It also regenerates our souls for the fullness of life that we're about to have in his church. It also opens the door to all the other sacraments by which we receive God's grace. And as we're all invited to gather around his altar for the Holy Eucharist, the great thanksgiving, we, the baptized, join with the saints and angels 
the archangels, and the whole company of heaven as we pray the greatest prayer there is on earth. This morning we read from Luke chapter 6. This section is called the Beatitudes, or the Blesseds, you might say. When I read these Beatitudes, I think these are the saints. They were the poor in spirit, the meek, the pure in heart, those who suffered for the name of Jesus. These are the ones who, that blessed those who cursed them, those who gave generously even out of their poverty, those who did unto others as they would have others do for them. In the midst of this portrait that Jesus is painting us in these Beatitudes, he also teaches us one of the most basic laws of his kingdom, which is this. The amount we measure out is the amount we will be given back. The more generous we are to others, the better we learn the art of self-giving, of self-forgetful love, the more intensely we will experience the fulfilled life that we all long for. And it's only because it is his unlimited generosity, Christ's unlimited generosity, that he can demand that his followers do the same. As baptized Christians then, people who have become full members of the mystical body of Christ, children of God, what is most important is treating others the way God would want us to treat them. Treat others the way God does. Jesus said, give to everyone who begs from you, And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for it again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. God shows us incredible mercy, kindness, and overflowing generosity even to those of us who don't deserve it. And we should do the same. We should empty ourselves as Christ emptied himself for us because God never holds back his love. Neither should we. Our very souls should be dwelling places for the Holy Spirit, where it can reflect the light of Christ to others. That is a lesson that the saints of God learned well. And it's the most important lesson that Christ wants each of us to learn as well. If we accept his help, we will be able to reflect his light to the world around us. My prayer is that in a world that it's increasingly unwilling to forgive, a world that's unwilling to show mercy and forgiveness, unwilling to be generous, my prayer is that we will be different. We will be different. I pray that God will renew within the church a true, authentic understanding of Christian charity, which will teach the world that there's a different way, that there is a better way. I know that here at St. John's Church, if we so desire it, and with God's help, we can be an even better positive example of Christian charity, generosity, and mercy for the people of Tampa, for the state of Florida, for the country, and even for the world. And so my friends, as we celebrate All Saints Sunday today, as we are inspired by the lives of the saints, And as we support these new young people who are about to be baptized, let's show them that the life in Christ isn't a life we live alone, but it is a community, a community that is knit together in love and a love that leads to action. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, 